Hello there, welcome to my channel on chemistry lessons. This is a BTEC applied science lesson and it focuses on the AFBAU principle and electron configuration. If you haven't already seen the previous video on electronic orbitals, use the link in the description below and go and watch that video first. If you're finding these videos useful, can I ask that you please subscribe and like so we can get them out to as many people as possible. So what is the AFBAU principle? Well, you've already been applying this at GCSE. The AFBAU principle is that electrons will fill the orbital with the lowest energy state. Or at GCSE, that was the inner shells first, the shells closest to the nucleus. And that gives the most stable electron configuration. So from the previous video, we're aware of the first shell just containing a 1s subshell, or an s subshell, we call it the 1s. We also know that the second shell is a 2s and a 2p subshell, which can hold eight electrons or four orbitals. And the third shell is a 3s, a 3p and a 3d. And we learned that in the previous video. So if you haven't done that, as I've said earlier, go back and watch that first. But that's going to tell us all about these subshells and orbitals that we're talking about here. So in terms of energy then, so the AFBAU principle is that they'll occupy the lowest energy level first, and the first shell is the lowest energy level. The first shell is just a 1s orbital. So when we see this square box here, this blue box, that's representing an orbital. So that's a 1s orbital, and there's only one orbital in the first shell. Then we move up to the second shell. Now the second shell contains s and p subshells. The s subshell is just one orbital, However, the P subshell is three orbitals. Notice how the P, the 2P subshell is slightly higher than the 2S subshell in terms of energy. This means in terms of AFBAU principle, the 2S will fill before the 2P. And then we go to the third shell. And the third shell is nine orbitals. And it consists of an S subshell, which is just one orbital, a 3P subshell, which is three orbitals, and a 3D subshell this time, which is in fact five orbitals, because that D subshell can hold 10 electrons. Now this is where it does get a little bit awkward because the fourth shell actually begins to fill before the 3D. So the 4S from the fourth shell is actually slightly below the 3D. So if we were to apply Aftbauer's principle, the 4S will fill before the 3D. And that is in fact the case. So we have the 1s subshell, the 2s subshell, the 2p subshell, the 3s subshell, then the 3p. We have 3d, but the 4s will fill before. So they fill in that order. 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, and 3d. Let's look at some examples for electron configuration then. I've put the periodic table on here because the periodic table is actually set out in these s, p, d, and f blocks. Okay, so for example, this section over here on the left is known as the S block. This block over here on the right is the P block. The block in the middle is the D block. And the block down the bottom is the F block. Now, the first electron is going to go into the first shell. And the first shell is just a 1s orbital. So the first electron goes there. You'll notice that I'm putting the electron as an arrow. That's, this is because electrons either have upspin or downspin, and I represent this with either an upwards arrow or a downwards arrow. We don't need to know what spin is or worry about what spin is in this module, but we just need to be aware that it either is up or down. So the first element, hydrogen, would have the electron configuration 1s1. The second element, helium, is 1s2. Notice how I've put a downwards arrow this time. That's because when electrons pair up, they will always pair with opposite spin. So I must always have one up and one down in each box. Third electron will go in the second shell because the first shell is now full. And this would be lithium, 1s2, 2s1. Then the fourth electron will be 2s2. So you might recognize that what I'm doing here is the first number is the shell. So it's the first shell, an s subshell, and there's two electrons in it. Then I've got the second shell, an S subshell with two electrons in it. The fifth electron then has to occupy the 2P subshell. So that's 2P1. And then the next electron will also go in the P. Now recognize here that 
it filled a different orbital. It didn't pair up. And that, that, that's a rule. So they will not pair until they absolutely have to. So that means the third electron in this P subshell, which will become P3, also goes into a new orbital. So all three orbitals have one electron in. The next electron, though, has to pair up. So it becomes P4 and it's paired up. Again, paired with opposite spin. The fifth electron again has to pair up. That's 2P5. That would be fluorine. And I'm going to look back at the periodic table now because you might recognize that fluorine is five along in the P subshell. And it's in the second row down, 2P5. Two P six goes across to neon, and then we need to start the third shell because the second shell is now full, and that's a three S one. Sodium, it's three down, and it's S one. This is the S block. This was the D block, and this was the P block. Three S two magnesium, magnesium two along in the S block, three rows down. Three S two is the outermost electron shell. Then we need to start filling the 3p shell, 3p1, in the exact same way that we did with the 2p. So p1, p2, p3, they don't pair up until they have to, and that's once we get to sulphur. See, sulphur is now p4, chlorine p5, argon p6, p5, p6. Now this is where it starts to get a little confusing because the third shell does have a d subshell. However, the 4s, the fourth shell here, the 4s orbital, is actually slightly lower in energy than the 3d. So that means it fills first, according to Aftbau's principle. So the next element, which is potassium, is 4s1. So the d subshell hasn't started to fill yet. And then we'll go to calcium, which is 4s2, because they've, they've paired up. That's the lowest energy shell or the lowest orbital. Then the D block will start to fill. So D1, D2, D3. And you'll notice again that they are not pairing up until they absolutely have to. Let's look at a past exam question then. So here we go. It's worth two marks here. We've been told that phosphorus has got 15 electrons and we've been asked to complete the electron configuration. Now they've started this for us, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. So that's two electrons plus two electrons plus six electrons. So they've already put 10 electrons in place. That means we've got five electrons to put in. Now the p subshell is full and the second shell is full. So the next orbital available is the 3s and we can put two electrons in it and that becomes full. So we now have three electrons. The next subshell is a 3p subshell, and we can put all three electrons in that subshell. So the answer there is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6 for two marks. Let's look at another question then. So this time they've given us this energy diagram, and they've told us that aluminium contains 13 electrons and they want us to complete this question. So this looks a little bit different, but don't be phased. It looks a little bit different to my diagram, but they've got 1s2 and then they've got 2s2. So we've got the next available subshell is the 2p. It's got 13 electrons. We've already placed four because we've got two here and two here. That means we've got nine electrons and I can put six in here. So I'm gonna go up, 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 down, down, down. So that P subshell is now full. I've put six in there. That means I've got three left to do. I'm going to put one electron in here and then the second electron here and the final electron will be P1. So the electron configuration here is 1s2, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p1. And that's the end of this video then, so please look out for the next video on forming ions. You will find the link in the description below.